Welcome to the Beauty Business Strategies Podcast, where we give salon, spa, and med spa owners quick tips to make more money, inspire your team, and create world-class client experiences. All right. Welcome, everybody, to the Beauty Business Strategies Podcast. My name is Michael Yost. Again, great having you a part of another uh, awesome uh, time together and another great conversation that we're about to have with the one and the only Laura Pincus. Laura, how are you? Doing wonderful today. Thanks, Michael. How are you? I am great. I am great. I say one and only because, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm going to just say it because Laura is kind of a big deal, right? Uh, so uh, definitely in the strategies community, uh, a big deal because Laura and her company uh, were our business of the year uh, winner at our past uh, awards. So again, congratulations on that. Uh, for those though, Laura, that don't know you, uh, now they do. They know, oh, hey, listen, business of the year. What? You know, that's a big deal. Better tune in and better listen to this. And you better because she's got awesome things to share uh, as a business owner uh, as far as that goes. But again, just a quick little update as I do every time. Uh, just quick little update on yourself, uh, your business, where you're located. Just give everyone a little picture of, of you. Okay. My name is Laura Pincus, and I am the owner of Shine hair color and design studio in Columbia, South Carolina. We have been in business for 12 and a half years and we have a modest but mighty team. Uh, five stylists, our awesome manager, Chrissy, who is also my sister and a few more um, guest services on our team. So we uh, started working with strategy seven years ago and we've never looked back. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, they've been a great part of the, the strategies family and uh, just great people uh, in general. Great group. Uh, you know, you mentioned the fact for those that don't know, you mentioned the fact that you also work with your sisters, part of the team. So who knows, maybe we can have some really great conversation because there's other people out there to like, Oh, great. Someone else that works with a family member. Cause that's always <laughs> brings up interesting dynamics, but we'll just see where the conversation goes. Let's just, we'll let the conversation uh, take it uh, wherever it takes itself. The place I do want to start, though, <clears throat> is this. Um, I introduced you for a very specific reason, not only because, again, just uh, congratulations on it, but just as our business of the year, because here's what I find interesting, and I think what I found so powerful about, about that, just that component, that, that win alone is, that takes someone, and here's where I kind of want to start just our podcast in general, is that takes someone, a business and business leaders and team members, it takes everyone really, that is willing to always constantly evolve to be able to win that type of an award, all right? Because again, you don't just do business, a business of the year just doesn't come about because, you know, that means we're doing a lot of things right, uh, but that means we have to evolve our business uh, in some way, shape, or form to keep up with things, keep up with what's happening. And, and you know, as the business uh, moves around in its natural course of ups and downs and the roller coasters that we all ride. Talk to me just a little bit about, I guess I'm going to keep the cast a wide net with this first question is, talk to me a little bit about the evolution of your business, the way it was, you know, you said, all right, you've been working. Let's just start when you open your business. We don't have to go through every nook and cranny, but what did business look like? How has business evolved in the in the years that you've been open? Let's start there. I mean, how's what have changes have you seen in your opinion in the industry as a business owner? We have seen a lot of changes. And I when we first started, honestly, it was myself and Chrissy who was managing the salon. I thought I knew enough to start small and try to figure out how to run a, a business. And then one of the business classes that I had taken prior to that, something that stuck out in my head, the instructor said, just because you're technically talented at what you do will not make you a good business owner. And you kind of, you know, step back and go, oh my goodness. So within six months of opening, we had another team member. And for me, that's when it got real. Um, Chrissy's my sister. So I knew, you know, she was, she was going to have to love me no matter what, but we were making a go of it. <laughs> right. She's going to still um, have the show for Thanksgiving dinner and holidays and things like that. Right. I mean, regardless. Exactly. Exactly. So, 
when you start to hire team members, when you start to hire employees that are not your family, it, it it's a different kind of real. And, you know, I think we were doing our best to come up with solutions and how to train our team and, you know, how to make a go of it truly as a business. And um, we had some stylists who had come, some had moved away, you know, in and out for different reasons. Um, but after about the fifth year, that was when I knew something needed to change. Um, it was more of trying to figure out how to hone in on systems and how to get our business um, from point A to point B. I knew that we needed to evolve. I knew things needed to change. Just how were we going to do that? And for us, the other part of it was I'm a stylist and I was working behind the chair. And sometimes I'd get paid as a stylist, but I also sometimes I didn't. It would just depend, you know, what the business needed and what the company needed and what the team needed. And, you know, I was kind of left on the side, you know, if need be. So that's where it needed to change because I thought, I know there are businesses that are successful, salons that are successful. And people open a business to, I don't know, for me, it was to be able to give our team the most that we could. So we started to look at different ways and different opportunities. And I had heard of strategies in the past, but um, we jumped in and did the incubator class and boy, that was eye-opening. <laughs> right. So, you know, again, I think that's obvious. It's eye-opening for a lot of people that take that class because it starts to show you all the avenues and aspects of your business that maybe we didn't consider uh and and strengthening those and you know getting stronger in the in the structures and the systems and all that to produce the outcomes that we that we desire what is you know as we as we talk and i think some of that will fit into this conversation possibly for sure is um what's it look like now for you, and again, I, I'm still kind of in this uh, mindset of this evolution. When you, so let's kind of use it this way. So we first opened a business, we had a kind of a dream and a goal, right? And then whatever that was. And then that might have kind of evolved and changed a little bit when you first came in contact with strategies. And now all of a sudden we've got a different dream maybe, or maybe a more clear dream. You know, what's it look like now? I mean, t talk to me about like, what was the dream and the goal? Well, like when you first opened, was it just like, cool, the dream and the goal was open a business and I did that? Or like, what was the dream and the goal then? And what's that dream and goal look like now? The dream and the goal when I first opened was to create a salon atmosphere, really with a strong culture. I was very fortunate where I had worked and where I had, I had been previously. Um, back when I lived in Pennsylvania, where the cultures were always very strong, always an amazing team. Everybody worked together. Um, then when I moved, it was just, it was a little bit different as expected. So I wanted to create an atmosphere, create a culture, create a team where that's what it was all about. Everybody working together. Um, where I, where I am now in Columbia, it was just a whole different feel for, you know, expectations and salons. And for me, I've always had high expectations of myself and you know, who I want to surround myself with. So culture was always something that played a huge part in who we are, and it is a big part of who we are today. Um, what I started to notice to, you know, where we could evolve was really honing in once we had another team member that we hired, how to give them opportunities, how to help them grow, how to have a better work-life balance, how to be able to create consistency for them and for their families. Um, because for us, that was just a lot of what we, I didn't see a whole lot anymore. And I think it's very important to be able to support the team that you have working with you and for you. Right. Right. No, absolutely. So I know uh, through just a little bit of our initial conversation, we've just made a hire recently, another hire now to our team. So you, you, we started again, looking back. We started with just uh, you and your sister, made that first hire. Now we've got uh, a team of, what are you at now? Six, six, seven, six? Five stylists. Yep, Five? seven total with our, yep. Mm -hmm. Perfect. So we got a team of total of seven people. And we just made, uh, recently, we just uh, had a new team member come on. What's that process? What's What's the process now? A lot of people out there now are really kind of challenged with finding people and hiring and things like that. 
Um, I'm more interested in that vein to know, as you were talking with someone, as you were interviewing someone, what's that, how is that process, did that look very different than it did that first hire that you made as far as what you talked about and what they wanted and, and things like, how's that evolution look like from that first hire to now the most recent hire is that, are the conversations just completely different animals? Because, you know, maybe that, that team member now that, that came on board was looking for something and asking questions that were completely different. I mean, what's that look like now? Yeah. So the evolution of that, you start, you know, I think in the beginning it was, I've learned you, you can't hire out of desperation and not that we always did, but sometimes we did. And it, the conversation was more of, you know, where do you sit technically? And, you know, how great are you at hair? And now the conversation is more of where are you at? Let's see where, where we are. How can we help you grow? And what are your hopes and dreams? What do you want to get out of it? And a lot of times, you know, what we find is people want to be part of a team. People want to know that there's a growth opportunity. So for us, it's talking about where they can get to not only technically, but from personal standpoint as well, how they can grow in their, how they can grow in their career, how they can grow financially, how they can set themselves up to know that they're not going to quote unquote, just be a stylist behind the chair for the rest of their life. Right. Right. So it's definitely, you know, I think that's an interesting observation that I think we all need to be aware of is you better make sure, you know, for those out there that, you know, again, hiring and and adding team are always one of those. It's always a hot button, always a hot button. Mm -hmm. I, I would like to say now more than ever, but I don't know that it's it's always been. Uh, a, a hot button, no matter what era we're in, uh, you know, whatever we've gone through. But I think that you you bring up a great point is, you know, for you, especially now, the evolution has become one that it's like, hey, listen, I really need to connect with people in a different way. Well, again, you mentioned hopes, the dreams, the goals, let's show you a, let's show you a future, you know, let's show you what team is about. You know what I mean? That uh, that we want to, you know, we're trying to build a team. Do you think that like, so you're most, um, with this most recent hire, was this someone that was, uh, do you feel like this was someone that was seeking out a team or do you feel like they, do? You, what did they come in looking for? She actually came in as a client and uh, one of our, our stylists was talking to her and knew she was in cosmetology school and told her that she needed to apply. So just after talking with her for a few minutes, realized she, she would be a great fit. Nice. So I think that, you know, the other piece of that, when we talk about the interview process, it's not just about myself or about Chrissy doing the interviews, you know, it's having the whole team interview people. So the, I think the really cool thing is everybody on our team knows what we're about and knows when they see and find a good person that would fit because, you know, really from her coming in to get a haircut one time, I mean, she's our next star stylist. Gotcha. Love it. So again, we're playing team all the way around. It's like, Hey, we're always looking, always looking for the next always. good, uh, that next good fit. Um, we've, we've had this, you know, we kind of set the table with, uh, the idea of, we always have to keep evolving is kind of the theme of, of today. Uh, talked a little bit about how that starts to show up just in business, just with hiring and just your evolution of, hey, listen, I had to recognize the fact that I, I needed to keep learning more about my business and systems and, and things of that nature. Where, here's a question, because again, some of that, I, I want to ask a question a little bit differently than, uh, than just going, oh, well, you did X, Y, or Z. Where are you, how do you stay evolving as a business owner? What are some things that you could share like with other people that are listening in? How do you stay in evolution mindset in a way and not just get locked into kind of this is how we've always done it or my mind's not, you know what I mean? How is that? What do you do? So for me, I, I constantly have my eyes and ears open. And I think the cool part is because I'm still behind the chair, I will, you know, I, I love listening to people's stories. So I think a lot of things are relatable from business to business for 
me personally, education is a big deal. So I, any, any place that I can get my eyes or ears on, you know, education, I will do that. And it's honestly, it's networking. It's talking to some of my other friends that own salons and trying to figure out what they're doing. Cause I can promise you, if there's something that you're having a hard time with, you're not the only person or something that you feel you're doing great. It's always fun to share those wins, you know, with each other too. Um, I think there's a lot to be said for reading. I think there's a lot to be said for listening. I think there's a lot out there, you know, online um, to learn, but I still think in person, face-to-face, -face, having a coffee with a friend that owns a salon, um, picking each other's brains is the best way to learn. Cause you honestly, nothing works for everybody, but when you customize it for who you are and what your, what your salon, barbershop, lash studio, um, med spa is, you will, you'll figure out what works for you and your team, but Love education it. and just always trying to be aware of what's new, find something that's working. How can you do it better? Right. So you mentioned a lot of things. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to put you on the spot here, uh, and recall maybe some of those things, obviously everyone's listening to the strategies podcast. We don't have to talk about strategies. Cause if you're listening, you're already like, dude, I do the strategies gig or I'm kind of familiar or if you're not if you're just tuning in check us out uh at a deeper level cuz there's a lot to offer but more than that I'd like you know you mentioned the fact that uh you like to read or you know online maybe there's maybe there's other unbelievably there might be other podcasts aside from the from the strategies podcast out there that you might actually listen to uh or other people uh, out there. He talked about community and, and we, you know, again, we believe in that very, very strongly. <clears throat> Are there things that you could share? Like, Hey, listen, uh, I read X, Y, or Z, and this has stuck with me. Maybe it's something recent, maybe it's something, you know, a book that just has stayed with you or something you came across, or is there maybe another, again, uh, another resource online or podcast wise, or just something that you're kind of constantly that for you, kind of fill your cup? Because I, again, I think a lot of people are always looking for other resources. Uh, so maybe share some of the things that you love uh, that help you out um, in some way, shape or form um, that someone else might find useful. So, yeah, I mean, first and foremost, yes, it is all, all the strategies. You know, you guys do the on lives and they're always helpful just to get new information we, we always say when we're in here, you know, how many times do you have to tell them until they get it? Well, sometimes you can take a class, but until you hear it the second or third time, it doesn't stick. Um, I, I found a book, I knew it was out years ago called Psy Cosmetology, which marries psychology and cosmetology. And um, I was able to get my hands on those books and we gave them to the whole team. And a week or two ago, I just ordered a book called Unreasonable Hospitality because I believe things that translate from the service industry, you know, we are part of that as well, just in a little bit of a different realm. So I'm excited to, to read that too. Nice. Uh, Simon Sinek is always a good one, you know, when it comes to leadership to listen or, you know, see what he has posted, see what he has put up because he's definitely um, a good one to follow on how to lead, how to create strong teams. Right. How to get yes. people to want to listen to you, you know, so I think that's it too. For me, I've learned from a from a leadership standpoint, it is not about someone standing over you and talking at you. Um, you know, it's getting everybody engaged and getting everybody involved. Right. I love that you bring up that it, you've just created the perfect transition, uh, which is exactly that. Talk about how you've evolved as a leader. You just mentioned, you just kind of, I mean, you just mentioned a couple of things right there. You know, how we lead, how we listen, that kind of an idea. Expand more on that, like your evolution as a leader. But, you know, yeah. Talk to me more about what you just were just, you did. again, you threw out a couple of really awesome things right there. Expand those a little bit more. I think when we first started, it was, you know, you think, okay, I've dreamed up this business. I've dreamed up this goal. I Now I need to think about everything that's going to happen and how it's going to go, you know, in here. And for me, what I've started to realize is when, when people play, when, you know, you have those team members, everybody, everybody wants to be part of it. And the more that we allow them to be part of it and throw their, you know, put their ideas in and work with them, everybody has a higher stake in the game. You know, everybody feels like they're truly a part of it. You're not just saying you are my team. 
And for us, what has been really neat is, and anybody that knows me and my team will probably laugh that I'm saying this, you know, it is hard for me to take a step back. It's just who I am. It's just, I like to be involved in doing things, but I've been trying to slowly, you know, take a few steps back, let everybody be part of it. Let everybody make some of the decisions. Let's see how it goes. And, you know, that's created some more freedom for me, but I think it's also, you know, we've watched some of the, if you will, the newer stylists, the newer team members come up. When we have someone who comes in here, they're happy to mentor them. They're happy to train them. And it's really great to watch and see because we all know what it was like to get to train the the first employee or coach up the first employee or get to help somebody move forward in their career, in customer service, in, you know, conversation, Um, any piece of that, that someone then you know, gets to share with another person. It's like you get, you watch their eyes light up. They're really excited to say, let me show you this. Let me help you. Um, Let's see what we can do together. And that's really, that's been amazing to watch and to be a part of too. Awesome. Awesome. Um, With your, if you were, all right, I'm gonna start that whole mindset again. As you can tell, if you're listening, it's like, you know, my mind keeps twisting as um, as Laura shares things and it keeps, you know, forming different questions and things I want to ask. And it's not just I don't just have a list of questions directly in front of me that I'm just kind of running this checklist because I want this to be something that just naturally evolves. And I think this this has really well. I think the question I want to ask then is if you were thinking, to your, you know, as a business owner, um. And again, an owner, I'm going to set this up a little bit differently. As a business owner, again, I mentioned at the beginning, you know, one business of the year. What Again, I'll just take a second to expand on that. What does that really mean for those that they're tuning? What's that really mean? Well, what that really means from our standpoint is here's a business that has shown its ability to maintain strength in multiple key areas of their company such as maintain a really strong productivity, maintain key systems that drive that, such as uh, the ability to retain a, a client. And I love the fact that you brought up already just that that book that's coming your way, right? Just always looking for ways to be able to create a better overall experience. And maybe you can pick up little nuances from things that we read or things that we hear. But we're talking about uh, a great customer experience as measured through retention numbers. We're talking about other key systems such as strengthening uh, just the key things that make our businesses grow and help us to grow sales, such as retail and pre-booking appointments, uh, all those kind of things. And you know, another key thing that we look at is a business that can maintain financial health and profitability, and not just being a profitable business, but what we do with that. You know, what that looks like. Uh, for those that are involved with our team members, does that mean benefits? Does that mean other opportunities such as education or paid education or or whatever? Right, uh, you know that goes into obviously the the ability to grow people financially through pay increases and raises. So when we talk about a business that's a, that's a you know a business of the year, when you're talking about people, you're talking about a business that does it right on a lot of aspects, but also has that component of that you also see the heart in that business as well. That's that give back in a sense. Um, when I say give back, maybe that maybe for some that might mean give back in terms of community and charity or things like that. But what I mean by give back, and that that's certainly part of that. But I think also give back is it's a way to grow people that are a part of it uh, as well. So. When you think about business of the year, all right, I I go through all that to try and set the table this way to go, hey, there's a lot of components in that. You know, for you yourself, Laura, what do you think has been the secret sauce that has got you to this point? Hey, you're talking about when you first opened, like all I knew was kind of like, yeah, I want to do this kind of a dream and it's going to be me and my sister. And uh, here we go. And now you look at this evolution over the course of these years to now to the point where, yeah, we've really accomplished some really awesome things uh, as a company. What would you say? I mean, if there, uh, there might not be one secret ingredient, but if you got one, two, or three things for anyone out there listening to say, here's what keeps me centered. Here's what keeps me, you know, uh, you know, 
on the on the job in a sense and and kind of locked in. What's some of the what, what what would you share with someone? For us, it is a and for me, it's a it's a genuine love of people. It is a genuine um, feeling that you know I get when I walk in the shine every day. It's a genuine feeling our clients get when they walk in because we have a we truly and I say it all the time. This is the best team we've ever had, um, and everybody gets it if you, you know, if you will. I mean, everybody's different people that comes from different, we all come from different background. We were all raised differently, but at the end of the day, our goal is to make people look great and feel good. So it's a, it's an all around feeling that we give to people. And, you know, for us, we truly believe that's the biggest part. I mean, even before we were, we were heading to Chicago, we had a woman, she goes, well, I will write you a handwritten letter if that's going to help. <laughs> you know, I mean, we just have people... Ah. <laughs> who who believe in us just as much as we believe yeah, in I that. I love it when people when 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 the 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 customer is involved. It's yeah. like listen, if you need if you need some if you need a testimony a handwritten testimonial, mm -hmm. they don't believe the five star <laughs> reviews on Google. Here it is on paper with hand. I love it. Yeah, and I mean it's it's one of those things. It's it's being able to create. For us, it's also been able to create healthy boundaries. You know, we we treat people like their family. We treat people, you know, how we would want to be treated or how we would want, you know, how we expect to be treated. And I think that goes that goes the longest way. You know, people come in here and they're never a bother. They're never, you know, oh my God, they're coming in. But I think you work at that to create that too. You know, we've learned to we've learned to set our business up that we we do have expectations and you know, what we expect um, of our team, you know, in a sense, we also expect of clients, you know, we, we expect them to come on time, we expect them to respect our time. Um, you know, I think there's a, a piece of it, you know, with with productivity, we have learned not to kill ourselves, we work hard, and we do a great job when we're all together. But we've, we're really striving to, you know, everybody can eat their lunch during the day. Everybody helps each other out. Everybody looks around and it's not just me, me, me. You know, it's definitely, that's never anything that we were always about, but everybody looks to help each other. I think there's something, you know, gratifying about being able to, you know, be a few steps ahead of somebody and just say, you know what, I got that for you. How can I make your day easier? And I think we all do a really good job at, at looking at that. So we're able to, yeah, you know, being productive is a, is a huge deal. We all know that's, you know, how a salon makes their money, but it's also about not killing our team. So in five years, nobody wants to do hair or they're saying I can't, or I can't be a part of this anymore. And I know for us too, it's communication has been a big piece of it for us too. You know, being able to talk to each other, being able to help each other out. If someone needs a little extra help that day, we're all on board and we can do it. If we know a client's going to need a little extra help that day, how many people can we get in? How many hands on? And for us, it's been really awesome for us to see people trust when we say that they have a whole team of stylists, a whole team dedicated to take care of them. It's not one person. And, you know, as life happens and things go on, you know, our clients especially enjoy having an entire team to take care of them. They know that everybody's able to do it. And, you know, for us, that also has created us having the ability to be a profitable company and to give back to our team. We do it with benefits. We do it with bonuses. Uh, we do it with paid education every year. Um, this year, honestly, we were fortunate enough. We were able to pay for everybody's trip to the team-based conference, too. That was something that we worked in on the cash flow plan, the tickets, the flights, the hotel. Um, you know, I, I think the biggest thing is we have learned to plan with intention, you know, before right. it was more of like, I'm just going to fly by the seat of my pants and, you know, oh, we make money. We're pro, you know, we're productive. So let's see what happens at the end of the month. And now it's become, these are goals that we set as a team at the beginning of the year. You know, we look at everybody at, in December and we set goals for ourselves at the at the end of the year. What do we want for the next year? And we try to figure out as a company how we can incorporate that for everybody. Right. I love everything you just shared there. I'm taking some notes 
<clears throat> on the side here. And three things stood out to me, and you, you talked about a, a number of things, but they all, a lot of these things keep pointing back to the three. I think there's three core things you said right, right away. You talked first and foremost about relationships. You know, again, remember this, the, I set this up with what do you think some of the secret sauce is, right? And uh, you talked about relationships. Uh, being one component of that secret sauce. And, you know, I think more now, I think more than ever now, let me, uh, let me ask you this question from first hire to most recent hire. Um, do you think there's a huge difference in terms of, of the, the weight you put on relationships um, and the expectations maybe that, the, that that person had of wanting a relationship, do you think, and I'm not trying to, I want to be really clear about this. I'm not trying to ask a leading question. Like I want you to answer it like, yeah, there's a huge change. Cause if, if you don't feel that, then, then I'm cool with like, no, I think it's always been there or no, I don't think it's any different, but do you see a, do you notice any big change in terms of the area of relationships and what people want from, again, maybe that when you first started in those first hires and how relationships, you might've defined them them to now. Do you think there's a big difference there and what people look for and what you look for or not really? Huh, yes and no. I mean, I think one of the things that we probably heard more in the beginning about 10 years ago is all about money. And I think now as we've started to get into hiring, yes, it's more about a work-life balance. And, you know, for us, I feel that the fortunate thing is we're able to really do both because we're not asking people to kill themselves to be able to get a wage increase. We are not asking people to work any, any more than 40 hours a week. You know, it's, it's really, it's not necessary when the whole team's working as need be. And I think from a hiring standpoint, cause that has, that's, I'll be honest. I mean, that's always been one of our biggest challenges and our biggest things. Like I know it is with so many other salons. However, the thing I learned is we used to hire a lot out of desperation. Gotcha. And I think knowing now what we know, it's, there's a million salons for a lot of different reasons. And I think everybody, every stylist, every owner has the opportunity to create the team that they want to have. And when you are really strong in what you want, what you want to allow, how you want to build your team, you don't settle. And we've had, we've had some people who have come in and who have interviewed recently. And just because of either, you know, what their specialties are, they might just not be the perfect fit for us. But, you know, the other thing is we're also happy to give them a recommendation for the salons in our area that, probably will be a great fit for them because our goal is we want you to grow getting to do what you love to do. Right. Love it. So you talked about relationships is one of the key kind of foundation, you know, secret sauce pieces. I love the fact too, you mentioned the fact that uh, expectations, you know, was another key thing that you put in there. And I think that's really important because I think that, you know, without expectations um, and expectations are, I think, you can look at that a lot of, from a lot of different lenses, the expectations that you might have of individual team members, the expectations you have for the goals that you want to have for the business, those expectations, the expectations for the customer, you know, the experience that you want to create. There's a lot of different ways you can look at expectations, um, both, like I said, personally with someone uh, else or just bigger picture. But again, I love the fact that you put that out there and it's okay to have expectations. Um, you know, it's okay to say, Hey, this is what we need, you know, and kind of one of the side things that kind of came out of that was you talked about planning with intent. Uh, I think that's, I think expectations and that kind of go hand in hand. The idea that if I plan with intent, I have to have an, you know, what, what am I going for? So, you know, I love the fact that you talk about relationships. I love the fact that you talk about expectations. I love the fact that you mentioned communication. Um, I think so many times, so many times people, you know, uh, leaders just don't communicate uh, enough. And the thing I like to say is we love to talk a lot, uh, but we don't communicate you know, and there's a big difference. Uh, talking a lot is just, yeah, I could tell you about my weekend. I could tell you about this. I could tell you about that. 
But communication to me is the idea of I'm sharing something with you that's going to be a benefit to you. And I want you to grasp a new idea or a concept or, or, you know, we're trying to achieve something or I'm trying to help you progress or vice versa. You're trying to help me progress. That's communication is communication is something that in a sense kind of moves a needle and we're really bad at communicating. We're really good at talking. And communication is just the ability to be able to share ideas with people to get them to see. Because I think a lot of people, and I'm going to kind of start to wrap us up here. I think a lot of people, when you were talking about all that secret sauce and things like that, one thing came out is, I bet you there's a lot of people listening going, man, I wish I had a team that that I get the sense of that looks like yours. And like, what's it take to get to that point of people that are like, I bought in and I'm in it and I, I'm a part of it and I feel a part of it. And I want to be, you know, I, you know, for everything you already mentioned throughout, like everything from, Hey, listen, you found your latest team member, not because you were even looking for them that you might've been looking, but you found your latest team member, not because you found them because a team member, they were sitting in that team member's chair and they're like, wait a second. They recognize something that they said, you know what I mean? Just like we would like to have team members that look like that, that embrace the things that we do, that see the bigger picture of the culture. Mm -hmm. I'll wrap up with this question. And it's going to be around team. If you were to define team, what's that definition for you? And how do you think your team would define team? For me, team is everybody playing the same game, everybody having an understanding of where we want to go, um, not only individually, clearly, but as, as a company. How do, we all, how do we all play? What's our role? Because everybody brings something different and everybody brings something special to the team. So for me, it's being able to pull that out of each individual because we all have different strengths. And, you know, I think the biggest part is really developing each individual strength because that's what helps us play best as a team. Um, I think for our team, they would say that it's how we all show up and how we are all present each day that we're here. And it's no matter whether it's a, you know, a salon team or a sports team, you know that everybody has to, has to play to win. And for us, you know, I believe that our team is built on honesty and trust. And, you know, really we hold each other accountable. Everybody sees that each person shows up every day. We all see that everybody's willing to help out. And there isn't someone who's just sitting on the sidelines and watching going, they'll get it. You know, that was something years ago. I remember I heard Neil say at, um, at a conference, and I think it comes out of his no compromise book, but, you know, if you were to take the roof off of your business, you know, what, flashing red lights do you see that like if they don't fit here it doesn't fit here or what's the what is the you know system that's not in place or that's not working and I think for me that's where a lot of this developed for how we could create the team was having people that all wanted to play and right. winning is different for everybody you know I think that's something that I'm learning too is you know, I have expectations, but just because that's my expectation of how I want things to flow, maybe that's not the best for the, for the next team member. What, what is it for them? That's going to be the best. So how do we get everybody to achieve what their goal is? Because my goal isn't everybody else's goal. And, you know, each individual goal isn't necessarily mine. Yep. I love that. I love that. That's a great way to kind of wrap today up because you, you ended, we started with the, with the, with the conversation around, evolution how do we evolve as businesses how do we evolve as business owners you know how do we just evolve in general within this within this world and that's a great ending is it kind of comes full circle back to this idea of it's almost like we're seeing your continued evolution or your next step in evolution is just kind of going yeah really recognizing that fact and again not just not just lip service but I think here's the key for everyone listening. It's not just lip service with what I mean is uh, a lot of us could say, oh, I recognize the fact that not everyone's goals are my goals. OK, that's one thing to say it. It's one thing to recognize it. And that's an important step. That's the kind of the first step. You know, everyone's got to have that. But now what action will I take on it? You know, and that's the evolution that we all need to 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 find is, you know, probably as you're just kind of sharing, it's like, 
you know, here's, you can see your continued evolution is, all right, I'm recognizing that. And now what are the specific, what actions will I take around that to really make sure I honor that? Because you talked about trust and you talked about, you know, uh, those key, you know, value pieces that are probably, again, your deal breakers. Uh, you mentioned trust and honesty. Uh, we're talking about honoring, you know, the people that we work with. We talk about relationships. We talk about expectations. We talk, you know, we can start to get a real sense of what it takes to look like to keep our businesses evolving. So this was awesome. This was a great conversation today. Uh, Laura, thank you so much for hanging out. Thanks, Michael. It's always great. Yeah, it is great. I love it. We're going to have to do more of this for sure. Um, with that being said, thank you for everyone that tuned in today. We hope we got some great nuggets out of there, something that uh, that you can take for yourself and, or it maybe just makes your mind start to go, okay, you know, I need to kind of start to process and what do I need to take from this that's going to help, that's going to be meant for me. Uh, so again, we, we trust the fact you got something great out of it because Laura shared a lot of awesome things uh, in, in our conversation today. But with that being said, we hope you have a great rest of your day, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, and we will talk to you all again soon. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks again for listening to the beauty business strategies podcast. If you like this episode, be sure to hit follow and please share the episode link with anyone who you think could benefit from today's content. To learn more about how strategies can help create more fun, profit, and growth potential for you, your company, and your team, we invite you to schedule a free 60-minute strategy session by clicking the direct link in the description of this episode. There, you'll also find links to our wide array of coaching, seminar, and learning opportunities, all of which can be found at strategies.com.